really want you to understand how important vision is to you. Vision can do things when nothing else can. Vision will get you through the lonely nights. Vision will get you through the tough times. Vision will get you through the rejection. Vision will get you through COVID. Vision will get you through. You know, I really want to recommend a book and if you have not read it, just stop the thing again. Get on Amazon. It's uh, Dr. Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Did you know it was the Nazis who actually created retirement? Kid you not, like look it up. Uh, the Nazis actually created retirement because they saw at 65, a man could not produce in the way that a man normally produces, okay? And he starts to take up more than he gives back to society. And Hitler was having these conversations like, well, what do we do now? Now they're leeching the system, they're taking up more. And he talked to all these psychologists, psychiatrists back in the day, and they actually discovered something really fascinating. They said, you know what? If they're not producing, you just take away their vision and they'll die within 18 months. So they called it retirement. We don't even know it because it's so permeated in our culture. One of my biggest mentors is a man by Jack Daly, great sales leader. And he's, gosh, 70 something. Don't kill me for not knowing this exact age. But Jack built a lot of really large sales organizations. We're talking hundreds of millions in revenue. And at 50, he, a little, little out of shape, a little bit, not, not, the, not the fittest 50 year old. And everyone was like, oh, you know, you're just getting older. You're just getting older. That's what happened. He goes, oh, why am I listening to that? You don't take advice from somebody more messed up than you in that category. Don't do it. And he didn't want to subscribe to the narrative that old age meant weak minded, meant feeble, meant that his best days have been lived. He said, you know what, mm -mm, that's not my truth. That's not my truth. This is my truth. And he started to run marathons at 50. Then, fascinatingly enough, he started taking swim classes. He's now done an Ironman on every single continent. An Ironman on every single continent. He's in his 70s, including Antarctica, because he had a vision for his life that was more compelling than the life he was living. I have a vision for my life which is why I deep down believe CF has not taken over. It will never take over because my vision is so strong. I see a tomorrow, I see a future that is so strong. You've heard the story and if you have not, allow me to remind you. Roy and Walt Disney. Walt invented this idea of a theme park for humans created by a mouse. Let that sink in and he died before it opened. And uh, an interviewer, a reporter was there and they were talking to Roy and they were like, man, Roy, don't you wish Walt could have been there to experience this? Don't you wish Walt could have been there to see this? And Roy looks at him and he goes, that's why you're a reporter, you don't get it. He saw this, he saw this. I know I did a good job at this keynote. If you can close your eyes and still see, you can still see your future. You have a compelling thing, and here's the deal. If somebody tells you you can't do it, just don't let, that's them being mediocre. That's them subscribing to a narrative. They couldn't do it doesn't mean you can't do it. Just because somebody else is putting their stamp on your life and saying it's not possible, does not mean it's not possible. The question is, is do you believe that crap or not? So when I interviewed all these millionaires, and actually a couple billionaires, now I'm friends with them. Very weird for a small town girl from Iowa. <laughs> college dropout, living in the hospital. like, I had no idea my life could be this incredible. But I remembered as a little girl, I said, and this is a true story, true story. I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody. I'm feeling it. <laughs> my little brother, and he's actually a big brother who's a state wrestling champion. So like, this guy's he's pretty jacked. Um, but he was 13 months younger, younger um, close in age, because my parents thought I was gonna die and they, they wanted a kid. Um, and he beat me up, right? Like brother, sister fights. Like it probably wasn't bad, but in my head it was like, oh, the worst fight I've ever been in. He beat me up and I remember running to my room and crying. And as I was there and I was just like, sit down, I was just bawling my eyes out. And of course, when you have CF, you can't just cry like a normal freaking human. You gotta like have the snot and the mucus and, this, and then I can't breathe. It's horrible, disastrous, don't, don't do it. And I remember thinking, I'm gonna learn how to fight with my words rather than my fists. <laughs> Literally, and that was the vision. 
That was the vision. I want to learn how to fight with words better than anybody can fight with their fists. Y'all, COVID's wiped out most speakers. I'm still speaking two to three times a week. My book that I wrote inside hospital walls became an international bestseller within the first 48 hours. It's on Amazon. Now it's on Audible because they wanted an Audible version. It's the vision. That's what's keeping me alive. That's what's keeping me going. That's what I refuse to give up. That's what I want to leave you here with today. If you're in a crucible moment, which by the way, if you're watching this, you are. 